So when you get to the lab, um, the instrument will already have been turned on either by the TAs or the lab manager and will be um, warmed up. So when you get to lab, the screen will already be open with the windows that you will be using today. So the first um, window you are going to be working with is the manual analysis control. So you can click on the window and you want to make sure the save data box is checked. So make sure that's checked. And then you are going to want to click on this open button in, um, to the right of the results data set name. And you're going to want to scroll down um, to a blank cell. And then in the name button, you can type in the name of your results. And then you can hit OK. The next thing you are going to want to do is we want to load the method that we will be using. So to do that, in the gray tab here, you can go to File, Open, Method, and then you can hit 143 Analytical Copper. So we will start with the copper method, and you can hit OK. To check that the method is um, properly loaded, in this method window here, you can see that it says 143 analytical copper in this aqua text. So the next step is we want to edit our method. So to do this, you want to click on the method editor icon, which is the second one from the left here. All right, so click on this. You want to delete any um, information that is in this table here. So to do that, you just highlight the row and hit delete. And since we are working with copper, we want to load the wavelengths um, that are optimized for copper. So we want to click on the periodic table, and you need to find copper. And then you want to click on this uh, wavelength table button to transfer them to the table. All right, so here you see all of the different wavelengths that are associated with copper. So you need to highlight all of the wavelengths. And then to transfer all the wavelengths to the method editor, you need to hit the Enter Selected Wavelengths in Method button. All right. Once you did that, you can exit out. You can exit out of the periodic table. And now you can see all of the wavelengths associated with copper um, have been put into the table. So the next step is in the method editor tab, under still under the spectrometer, you want to go over to the settings tab. Here you just want to make sure that the delay time in seconds is at 30, so it's at 30 seconds, and that our replicates are at 3, and also that the measure by is um, checked for element. Now we can go down to the sampler tab here. And you just want to check that the pump is reading 1.5 mils per minute in the parasog pump tab here. So 1.50 milliliters per minute, OK. Now we just want to check our method before we run a sample to make sure that is sound. So to do this, to check our method, we can click on edit here and then check method. And so this window will pop up and if your method is okay, then it'll just tell you method is okay. So you can hit okay. Now we want to save the method before moving forward. So to do that, you can go file, save method, and now we are ready to take our blank sample. So the first part of the experiment is we need to optimize the wavelengths for copper. So if you remember in the method editor, we selected all of the wavelengths into our method. So the instrument will um, collect data at all of those wavelengths. So we need to collect a blank sample first. So, um, and we take three replicates of the blank um, sample with a 30 second delay between each replicate, or a 30 second delay um, between when I hit 
go into when it analyzes the blank. Um, all right. So to do this, all you need to do is to insert the inlet line into the um, the blank sample, which in this case is the Erlenmeyer filled with the millipore water. And once you do, once your partner has inserted the line into the Erlenmeyer, you need to hit the Analyze Blank button. Once you analyze the blank sample, we can move on to our first um, sample. So you always want to start with a low concentration if you are working with a series of solutions. Um, so in this case, um, I will be starting with sample A1. So in this um, sample ID window, you can change it. And since this is A1, I'm going to hit type in A1. Okay. Again, make sure your partner at this time places the line into the volumetric flask containing the solution. And then once you're ready to go, you can hit Analyze Sample. On day one of the lab, all you're going to be doing is preparing all of your solutions and you'll be doing all the analysis on day two. There are just a couple things to note about the solution preparation. So you will need to be dissolving um, the three different metals, the copper, zinc, and the brass. And to do this, you are going to have to use the six molar nitric acid. So when you get the metal sample, you want to weigh it out in a, tear it out in a beaker, and then dissolve it in approximately 10 milliliters of nitric acid. And to do this, you're going to need to heat the solutions. So you need to set the solutions in their beaker on a hot plate and turn up the heat to approximately 90 to 100 degrees Celsius until all of the metal has dissolved into the solution. Um, make sure you're transferring the metal from the beaker into the volumetric flask, that so you have some water already in your volumetric flask, so you're not adding um, acid to the water, that you have some water uh, already present in your volumetric flask. Another thing is you want to make sure that the dissolved metal solutions in your beaker are relatively near room temperature before you um, dilute to the mark on your volumetric flask. So you want to make sure to, after you prepare all of your solutions, to save them because you won't be collecting any data until day two. Um, so to do this, you just want to parafilm um, around the cap of your solutions and um, save them until day two, making sure all the solutions have appropriate labels. So collecting a sample uh, using the ICP AES is relatively simple. You're just going to use the inlet line here. And all you need to do is to just insert this into your sample. And just make sure that the plastic end is fully immersed in the sample. So right now I have the line inserted in the millipore water. Um, you're going to be using the millipore water throughout your experiment to rinse in between various solutions. So for instance, if I was um, going from solution A6 to solution D, I would need to rinse in between the, those because they are different solutions. However, as it states in your lab procedure, if you are going um, from low to high concentration of the same solution, say from A5 to A6, you do not need to rinse uh, with the millipore water in between those solutions, as long as it's the same solution and you're going from low to high concentration. If you have any problems or into any difficulties during this experiment, please ask your TA or Deb for assistance. So to um, transfer the inlet into um, the next solution you want to measure is relatively simple. You just uncap the volumetric flask. And all you need to do is to move the line straight directly into the volumetric flask, making sure that the plastic tip at the end is um, submerged fully in the solution. So now you have just taken a blank sample and your first copper uh, solution, at, you've sampled these at all of the different wavelengths. So now you, after you determine what the optimal wavelength is for your um, data collection, we need to go and 
back into the method at editor. So method editor. And you want to delete all of the wavelengths except for your optimal wavelength. So to do this, you just highlight the rows. And then you can hit delete. Okay. And this will remove all of the um, extraneous wavelengths. For the blank sample um, at the one wavelength, we need to change the replicates to 16. So again, go back into the settings tab. And under this replicates, we need to change this now to 16. And you can't enter it in apparently with the keyboard, so you need to hit the up arrows with all the way up to 16. Just again, double check to make sure that we're taking measurements by element and the delay time is 30 seconds. Okay. Now again, we just need to me me check our method to make sure that it is okay. So to do that, we'll go to edit, check method. All right, it says our method is okay. All right. Again, you wanna save the method before you um, take your blank sample. So file, save, method. Now you're ready to take your blank sample. So to take your blank sample at the optimum wavelength, um, you want to make sure that you were flushing the line before you um, take your blank sample to remove any residual copper that solution that may have been in the line. And then when you're ready to take your uh, blank sample, you can hit Analyze Blank. Just to note, this is the last blank sample you'll be taking for all the copper measurements. So once you have collected your 16 replicates of the blank sample at the one wavelength, um, you need to go back into the method editor and go into the settings and change the replicates down to three. So you'll be using three replicates for all of the remaining copper and unknown brass solutions. All right. Just as before, um, you want to um, Make sure that the element is checked. We have a delay time of 30 seconds. And it's always a good idea to do the check method. So you can edit, check method. Method is all right. All right, file, save method. And now you are ready to um, take your copper sample. So make sure your um, partner inserts the line into the copper sam sample and when you are ready to go, um, you can hit Analyze Sample. There's a couple of things to note here. So when you are moving from um, solutions A1 to A2, for instance, you do not need to rinse the line in between those solutions as long as you're going from low to high concentration. But if you are going from, say, solutions A6 um, to the unknown solutions or solution A6 to solution A1P um, with the phosphate, you always need to uh, rinse a line with the nanopure water when you are moving from any solutions that have a different um, composition from one another. So when you have finished collecting all of your data um, using the copper method, you can move on to the zinc method. So once you are done collecting all of your data for both the copper and the zinc, um, you are going to want to save your results file. Um, so just to note that um, all the data will be added to this um, results file, both the copper and the zinc. So you need to click on the results window. So to do this makes um, the results window up here became blue, so that means it's like the active window. And then you're going to go to File, Print, and then you want to hit the active window because we just highlighted our results here. And we want to save it as a PDF. So you want to hit the PDF creator here in the name. And then hit OK. And then you can give it a name. All right. 
and then you can hit save. And this will save it in the share documents folder. All right, can it save? And then your PDF will, um, with all of your results tabulated, will um, pop up here. Just make sure again that you save it into a shared documents folder so every member of your lab group can have access to the data.